Great. Sounds awesome. All right. Hi there, everybody. Um, I'm Luke Nielsen, and let's get this meeting started and, and see how, how things go. Anyway, um, it, uh, they, I was kindly asked by Pat to uh, give you a tour of the workshop and a little intro of myself and whatnot. So let me go ahead and start. Uh, I'm here in my office, and I'm going to do a little intro, uh, tell you more about myself probably for about five minutes and then we'll walk out to the workshop and I will give you a whole tour of the, um, of the whole operation. Now, uh, I'm sorry to disappoint a lot of people, but I don't consider myself a wood turner. However, I do use wood turning for um, a lot of the things that I do. And I'll tell you more about it in a moment. Now, my background is a mostly uh, from the world of magic and magicians. I've been uh, doing magic since I was a kid, and eventually I went to university, and I have a degree in theater uh, with emphasis on technical theater. So it, it, that, that's, uh, I like to make things. Uh, technical theater involves stage carpentry, lighting, and so on. So that is what I have been doing. Uh, but then I went back into the world of magic. So from about 1988 to about 1995, I was just doing a uh, magic and magic shows. And um, if you're in entertainment, what will happen is that you, you find work that it can be very, very steady. But then all of a sudden you have no work. You can be working solid for the holidays, October, November, December. And then you have no work in January. So from time to time, what uh, what I would do is find odd jobs here or there, tending bar or answering phones for somebody or whatnot. And in 1993, I got this odd job that was related to, to uh, my chosen career. I was working at a workshop in Middleburg, Virginia, in, in, in the uh, other coast of the United States. And that workshop made magic props for magicians. So that really, really appealed to me because it was, uh, I, w I was working with my hands and part of my job was to uh, do what the master craftsman there didn't want to do. So I learned a lot about um, a, a, a polishing metal, making springs, making little parts and things for that, for the tricks. And on top of that, I did their bookkeeping. So I learned two things. I learned that you do not make magic. You do not make any money making magic props. It was very, it's a very difficult business. And the other thing that I learned were all the little tiny skills regarding all these props. Now, go forward to 1995, and um, eventually I would hang out with a gentleman that would become my husband, and he had a magic business called Nielsen Magic. So between, and his name was Norm Nielsen. So between Norm and I, we uh, started, we, we were doing the, the business together and I started managing it. And the Nielsen Magic Business makes magic props for magicians. Now, the, there were three uh, forms of revenue for the business. We had making the props, performing all over the world and doing conventions and uh, and shows and everything. And we also went, uh, we, we had a vintage uh, poster business on, the, on magic posters, but that's another topic. We're mostly on the, on the building and manufacturing uh, topic here. So all those three things com combined uh, really did provide us a good living. So uh, 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 let me see. So uh, I, we were traveling all over the place. And by 1998, Norm says, I'm getting tired of the travel. I was also tired of traveling too. And we just retired and decided to stay up at home. That was the time, like around 2010, 2011, that I decided I want to, uh, to, to work on something else or, or, or really master something else. I was pretty good with tools, but I wanted to do uh, more of the uh, more learn more fine woodworking. So I started taking some classes on fine woodworking, and a few years later, like a couple years later, a, a few of the locals told me about Jimmy Clues, 
And Jimmy Clues is like the wood turning star here in Las Vegas. He uh, is from Newcastle, England. And he was my, uh, and he still is my wood turning teacher. So I started taking his boot camp class like in 2012 for wood turning. And uh, I have used wood turning in the business ever since. Now, I wasn't really serious at uh, 2012. I was just dabbling with it. I took the boot camp class, was confident to use the tools and learn wood turning. And then in 2016, I wanted to get into it more seriously. That's when I bought a huge lathe and uh, and started to take it more seriously but it's still something that is just part of uh of the uh, skill set that i have so that's in short that's my background uh and uh, about fine woodworking my favorite thing for woodworking is uh furniture making and uh and uh and then of course i build the magic props so here we are in the office and we uh, you have a mom and pop operation and I will turn the camera around so that you can see what it is. So as a mom and pop business, uh, that, that to, to do things by yourself and have your hobby become a business, uh, you have to treat it like a business. So we have a home office uh, talking about furniture. Uh, this is a recent project that I made. That's a barrister's bookcase that I made in cherry and the glass in it is a uh, stained glass and the person that helped me learn about stained glass was mary clues who's jimmy clues's wife i asked her do you know anybody that uh, can help me to put stained glass uh, pieces on my barrister's bookcase and she says i'll teach you so that's a piece i made and the table for the computers so as i was telling you if you have a home business or um, or uh, uh, a, a business uh, for your hobby, treat it like a business. I'm here every day at nine o'clock in the morning. And uh, that's my uh, other computer where I email people and answer all the correspondence. And half of the work is mostly paperwork, a lot of bookkeeping, paperwork, advertising, and so on. So I'm here every morning at nine in the morning and then, uh, in the afternoons I go to the workshop so follow me to the workshop and I hope I don't make you dizzy so uh, so it is a, a home that uh, the upper floor is the office and then we're just going to go outside the door here so the home in Vegas that we have is uh, is um, uh, a zone for residential estates, which allows you a building for every half acre. So we have one acre with two buildings in it. So this is the house. Here is the house and we're heading to another building, which is our workshop. So I'll show you a little bit of what the house is. So that's where we live. And the nice thing about the setup is that the workshop is completely a completely separate building. So I opened the, the door of the sheds because I know that everybody, when they describe their, their uh, workshops, they wanna see where people store things. So I opened these two doors to have them ready for you. And I hope I don't make you dizzy. And here we go. So this is one shed and this is where I keep, keep all the wood that we would need for any particular project. So there are uh, pieces of wood there. This is all the lumber that I get at our uh, lumber yard. Pieces of plywood back there. These are all leftover over pieces of, uh, of wood from projects. And back there, I have a whole tree back there uh, that, um, bunch of logs are mostly ash and the dark ones are mesquite which is a, a very um, uh, popular tree here mesquite is gorgeous wood to turn I really 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 like it and uh, it, I have jigs and all sorts of things here in stir in storage uh, the other shed uh, have a business so 
So uh, this is just a, where I throw a lot of things here. These are packaging supplies, like tubes and boxes and, and things. So it's, this is just messy. There's other logs that people give us. We have, uh, I have some mulberry down there and some uh, mesquite. Those are mesquite logs. I don't know what I'm gonna use them for, either carve them or, or make a nice barbecue. So I am going, heading over to the workshop now. So here we go. And this is the workshop here. So there we go. I hope I didn't, I didn't uh, make you dizzy, guys. So there we go. So that is our current workshop. This used to be a, um, a uh, three or four car garage, and it actually has an oil pit as well. So this is what it is. Uh, the, the size of these is roughly uh, 1,200 square feet. That's about 108 square meters, about six meters wide times about, I say about 18 meters long. So it's a very eclectic workshop. I will show you the, the, the wood turning at the very end. So I'll give you a brief tour of the whole thing. Uh, there's a question, does a mesquite, a, well, we'll leave the questions for the end because then I will not distract. Uh, Pat will relay the, the, the questions in a moment. So anyway, this is a full functioning workshop. Uh, this is the, the planer. It's a DeWalt planer, has served me well for about eight years or so. It's a 12 inch, inch material you can put through and I can roll it around the shop. We do everything, guys. Uh, this, um, all these colorful pieces there are mats for picture framing. And up there I have uh, metal cases with um, uh, epoxy and flocking material and tools for chip carving and so on. I have a few blanks there on the floor. Again, there is a piece of mesquite on the right. There's ash. I have a pecan on top. And uh, let's see, that's our table saw. Uh, use uh, a saw stop, and actually that is handy. Uh, I get a lot of tools on, uh, as a great deal on sale because the uh, largest woodworking show in the United States comes here to Las Vegas. So if it starts like on a Wednesday, I go to the convention center first thing in the morning and I ask all the dealers, um, if, uh, if, they, if they don't want to ship their tools back, I can buy it. So I normally get good discounts. I got this mini gorilla uh, a dust control system at that convention and got like $300 off that because they didn't want to ship it. And that's hooked up to the table saw into this sander. There's a drum sander there. So a lot of things, these are boxes with molds and jigs and things. I do silicone molding. So there's some silicone material up there. I do, uh, that's compound for polishing. And uh, these are boxes full of jigs and molds and things. There's a little jointer, six inch jointer. Um, need to get a new one, would love to get an eight incher. And uh, that's uh, a polisher. We have a router table, compressor, a uh, spray booth. And this spray booth has a motor on the very, very back. And I open the door and the, the motor takes all the fumes out and all the overspray out. So that is a, a little, uh, the booth uh, and other tools there. Um, they, Clamps, clamps, tons of clamps. I mean, the person with most clamps wins, doesn't it? So uh, over here, uh, picture framing. That's all picture framing molding that we have around. So in talking about picture framing, there's a, a cutter for miters, a chopper for miters. And next to me, that is an underpinner for uh, picture frames. So we used to do a lot of framing as well. 
uh, table saw, a work with metal. This is a metal section as a shearing tool. And uh, we have uh, a little band saw, a press. So it, it is a complete workshop for most of the things, uh, small props and things that one would like to do. I have uh, punches, all sorts of punches here. Uh, brass, aluminum, some steel, steel sheets back there as well. And the see things are combined. I have veneer here that I bought the other day for another project. And little tools. Uh, these are like uh, hole punches. And oh, over here, I, this is for inlaying, for inlaying wood. So I do, sometimes I do stringing on boxes and things like that. That's another metal press. This is the, um, this is my, um, Sharpening setup is a um, uh, a grinder a, and use a Wolverine system, and uh, that's the way Jimmy taught us. And then I bought this a this is a Stuart Batty platform. I love that platform because there are certain tools that you have to do free. Uh, you have to sharpen freely without the jigs, and this thing has so much control and is very close to the wheels. And I really like that. So I use that and, uh, and of course, a Wolverine jig with all the, uh, there's a dressing and, uh, uh, for the wheels and uh, all, the, uh, all the little jigs out there. Uh, tools, tools, tools. You'll see a lot of tools. Uh, it, I do molding. So there is a vacuum chamber there uh woodworking that's my number 62 lineals and uh uh plane so anything anything that we need to make props it got it more clamps and so on uh this is a table full of stuff this has my routers uh has a couple of routers and mortiser uh i inherited a tormic sharpening system from a friend that passed away. I haven't used it yet, but I look forward to checking it out. Projects, blanks, uh, let me see, uh, wood. Uh, there is, um, this is a beautiful piece. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, of uh, maple burl and uh, spindle sander. Let's see, what else? More clamps. I need some, I, I have to figure out a, a place to put those clamps. Uh, this, uh, I built this little bench in the cabinet. Cabinet is full of sanding supplies. So there's uh, the Festool sanders along with all the sandpapers. Um, I got on the CNC wagon, got a Shaper Origin uh, router. So that's it. I hope I'm not making you guys dizzy. Um, this is another grinder equipped with a cardboard wheel. I use a cardboard wheel to sharpen um, hand carve, carving uh, chisels. So that's what it's used to. And sometimes I have to work with metal, so I interchange them with uh, a metal brushes. That is a, um, a little belt sander, a milling machine. This thing is a workhorse around here. This cuts, so this is a mat cutter. Uh, a bandsaw. Behind it, there is a gray cabinet with tons of other tools for woodworking and whatnot. And that box back there is full of Forstner bits. So, and I have another little cabinet all full of tools. So, let's see what's in here. That's uh, like um, uh, hex wrenches. And uh, what else do we have here? Let's see. Those are files. So it's, it's full of tools, anything we would need. So let me go back here. And these are current projects. Uh, I'll show you those. I have more tools here, a scroll saw, a miter saw, uh, dust control. I was too lazy to put that on the ceiling. So I turn it on, it's close to the table saw and sander. So that cleans the air a little bit around here. These are current projects I'm working on. 
these plugs are for a magic trick that I'm working on. It should be ready sometime next week. And these are almost finished. They need painting. These are marionette controllers. There's a, uh, two friends of mine that have a puppetry school in town and they asked me to make their marionette controllers. So this eventually will get a, an aluminum piece. That's the top of it. And that goes there. And there's another section that goes there. It has like 14 holes. So it pretty much controls a, a whole puppet after you're done with it. Uh, that's walnut uh, for yet another project you have to get started on. And uh, just little stuff. See, I was uh, turning uh, some pieces that thing cracked. It was fun. While well, it lasted, it cracked. It's from a, from a tree that fell down in our property the other day. Those are turnings. I'll come back to those later. Uh, this is the area where uh, I have jigs for the smaller tricks that we make and materials. Everything is in each, uh, each um, container has a particular trick that we make. And on the shelf, I have boxes for shipping and even some kits. That's a uh, pepper mill kit. So, hey, I can make pepper mills. So there you go. That's a tripod where, where I'm going to put the camera in a moment. And of course, I ship things daily, every day, uh, even during the pandemic, although business has slowed down a little bit. I uh, still have uh, some mail order going on. So this is the shipping department. And uh, if I go to this cubby hole, these are things that I have in stock for uh, the tricks that we make. So that's uh, some of our stock. And uh, made a batch of those chop cups the other day. So that's basically a mom and pop little magic business. So. I have a scale there to weigh things. This is the uh, stress reducing department. If I just want to shoot darts, I do it from over there to over there. So that's basically it. Now we go for the wood turning. So here's my first lathe. The first lathe that I ever had was a, um, it was from PSI. It was a commander lathe a uh, turn crafter commander it these legs are really really sweet they're beautiful um the the thing that i like about this midi lathe is that it has a one horsepower motor i have seen um a i have seen a jet uh lathe and they all have like half a horsepower or three quarters this thing is a beast you can turn little nice bowls and at one horsepower is awesome. So this is the lathe that I used between 2012 to about 2016. And then after 2016, I bought the last lathe I'll ever need, which is the, a, uh, the Powermatic lathe. I think it's 3520 or uh, 3520B for this particular lathe. So it has served me very well. I absolutely love this lathe. And, uh, oh, I didn't show you what I have in the background. In the background, I have the painting department. And uh, the painting department and, uh, and screw and hardware department. So here we have all the paints. I also have all, a bunch of the Jimmy Clues colors there for coloring things. And we have, this is the uh, a machine screws. And over here, there's more screws, 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 and hardware and paint, lots of paint. I have to go over some of the paint. Some of it is old. I have to throw it away. But uh, that's basically what it is. Uh, believe it or not, I can find almost anything. But it, it's just messy. These are chestnut uh, inks. And more paint over here. So paint and adhesives and uh, stuff like that. Finishes have oils, all sorts of oils. Uh, Watco oil, teak oil. Uh, that's shellac uh, that I made, polyurethane. Uh, tack cloths, finishing, 
things, what else? Uh, in the bottom, more pay. For a lot of the, of the work that I do, do a lot of woodworking. Uh, those are Mohawk toners. And I also use uh, automotive lacquer paints. I love automotive lacquer paints because they have more solids. And, um, and instead of having to put six coats of lacquer, two coats does the trick. So uh, there is uh, lubricants here, oils and, and, and a few adhesives there. Uh, so, and there's more paint over there. So that's the background there. So as I was telling you about this lathe, I love my little lathe. Then I have that Powermatic. And uh, tools, I admire you guys. You guys have your tools on the walls and neatly placed. I, I just keep them in a box under that bench. So um, when I, whenever I'm turning, I will uh, pull the box out and then I determine what tools do I need for today. Uh, oh, I'm gonna turn a spindle. So I just pull out a roughing gouge, a spindle tool, a, a skew chisel, and, um, and probably a, uh, a parting tool, and that's it. You know? So I just pull them as, depending on the project, I will be working at that moment. Uh, so let me see, it, turning projects. I, I consider myself a competent uh, wood turner, but I'm, I'm no expert at all. Uh, but I like to do enough wood turning for, uh, to uh, keep me out of trouble. So I'm going to mount this camera on the, uh, on the tripod and then I'll show you the pieces uh, over here. So I'm mounting the camera on the tripod and I'm turning it around and I hope uh, you can see me. So there, there I am. So let me see. So it's going to be a little bit more comfortable for me. There we go. To, uh, to show you a few things over here. Let me pull it up. So basically, I don't consider myself a complete expert, but I have taken enough classes. And um, uh, these are platters, 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 OG platters. And I think I saw a question about uh, what my website is. I have two websites. The main website for the business is nnmagic.com. That's my livelihood. That's where, where we sell uh, all sorts of magic stuff. So it's nnmagic.com. That's the main business. And then my hobby website is iworkwithwood.com, which I still have to populate. I have to put more things for my resume and uh, keep up a blog for that. So... So that's uh, platters, platters. Uh, that's a nice burl, burl platter that I made a while back. I have glued stuff and turn it. Actually, it's easier when you glue wood because there's no grain when you do this. So it's pretty cool. Uh, bowls. So made enough bowls. This is a mesquite wood. It's absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous wood. So made a bunch of bowls, bowls. Uh, I practice, try, I have even tried uh, texturing things. So that's another bowl with a texture. Uh, I do the Jimmy, Jimmy's uh, for, for uh, 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 you know, square design. Uh, and I'm my worst critic because that OG needs some work, but what the heck, you know, made it. Took a class with Stuart Batty a while back. So that's his uh, signature shape. Um, one of the things that I did in the back is a chess set that uh, I got it out of my system, making a chess set. So it was good practice for small pieces and repetitive uh, turning. Uh, so that was good. I love uh, turning goblets. And uh, in particular, I put a lot of, uh, I like uh, captive rings, ring goblets. So I've made a bunch through the years. And I'm still making that. I'm on like I'm on my goblet phase right now. I've uh, been learning a lot about uh, spindles and so on. Hollow forms. So everybody does has to do a hollow form. Uh, pens. So make pens. Make um, a bottle stuffers. Whatever. Whatever rocks my boat at that moment, I'll make it. 
uh, what else? Um, leather boxes. And uh, the most complicated piece I made, and I forgot the name of the guy. He wrote a book called Woodworking Wizardry. Uh, David, is, somebody will, will, uh, will remember. He's a fellow in England. Yeah. He's a fellow in England that makes all these puzzle things. So this is the most complicated piece I have made. Is a Christmas ornament. It took me two months to get this because I don't have the right book. Uh, that, that's it, David Spring it, David Spring it. So I don't have the, the, the right wood because he uses like boxwood, which is, which is pretty easy to, to turn. So this is made out of cherry and I exploded like four globes before I finally got, got one. And then I didn't like the carvings and it was supposed to be the carving on the outside and it was supposed to be a Christmas ornament. So to make it Christmassy, I just plucked it in red. But it was, it was a wonderful project to work in. I, I work, uh, uh, loved it because it's an impossible object. I made a very fine finial out of ebony and put, of course, a captive ring on it. So that is a, the most complicated project I have done. So I really uh, currently do not have any style or signature piece in, uh, in wood turning. However, if I were to, um, to eventually work on it, uh, I think I gravitate more to the delicate pieces uh, rather than the big spectacular ones, but something more delicate and finer, uh, that would probably be what, what, uh, what I'm interested in. And I'm going to raise this so that I can see you guys better. And, uh, and that's about it. That's, that is the, uh, the tour of the Nielsen workshop. So if you have any questions or anything you want, to, and any feedback you no want. No questions, Lupe. Oh, you're gone, Lupe. Pardon? You're frozen. Okay. Yeah, and the gremlins are really getting us tonight. Okay. No more, no questions or anything? Are we all gone? Are you there, Lupe? Yes, I'm here. Okay, yeah, the only question that came up, Lupe, was in regard to the mesquite and the flower that had, that grows the on it. The mesquite. Can you repeat that? The mesquite, uh-huh. Yeah, um, is there a flower that grows on it and what color is it? A, 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 uh, can you repeat the question? Is there a flower that grows on the tree and what color is it? Uh, I have not seen the mesquite flowers. It is a desert tree. It doesn't, it doesn't particularly flower. I have two mesquite trees in our property, if you want to see the, the tree. But, uh, but I do not know, uh, I have never seen it completely flower. If it's, uh, the flowers would probably be very, very, very tiny. Uh, it is a lovely tree. Uh, the wood, when you turn it, feels like turning uh, mahogany. So it is, it is, um, it, it is gorgeous. It has a, a little bit of Chateau Yancy. It's, uh, it's a really pretty, very durable wood. But yeah, I don't, I don't think I recall seeing too many flowers on that tree. But I bet they're very tiny because it has very tiny leaves also. Okay, somebody obviously has an interest in it. So Google, I'm sure, will provide another answer if the need be. There's, yeah. not many, there's not many questions in. You answered sure. one with the website, Lupe, so that was fine. Um, so, yeah, that was, I'd love to say I enjoyed it. I missed 99% of it trying to get people in here to see you. Um, <laughs> your neighbor, Mary Clues, is chawing at the bit, trying to get in and she can't. But um, So, if you've, have you more to show us? or? Uh, basically, that's the, the tour of the workshop. As I tell you, I do uh, wood turning as, uh, as one of my skills for whatever I do. I don't do the wood turning, uh, you know, as a, as, a, as a main hobby. However, uh, wood turning is, as compared to uh, furniture making or making of the props and everything, is a very nice and relaxing thing to do because it's like my instant gratification kick. So if, for instance, I have a very frustrating day that everything I do doesn't work out, then all I have to do is put a block of wood on the lathe and in two hours or three hours, I have something to show for, my, for a lousy day. So it is, it is absolutely amazing instant gratification. 
So uh, it's, it's a wonderful hobby to have and it, it, it want something wonderful to learn as well. It's definitely a therapy in itself, Lou There's no absolutely doubt. super therapy, and uh, I I look forward to taking more classes and learning more advanced techniques and so on. And uh, it's just the sky's the limit with wood turning. It's just amazing what I have seen on this forum, and uh, some of the members are so amazingly talented. And I look forward to keep learning more and more about it. Well, Lupe, I can't thank you enough because we had a run through last night and we had three computers on the go in your home, which is fantastic. But you did an amazing yeah. job to say you went around and did all that with a phone. Well done. Yeah. Well, I'm that's happy. it. A girl and a phone. Actually, and actually, the iPhones, the camera is better than the than the camera on the computer and the iPad. So, uh, so it's, that, it's pretty good. Unfortunately, anyway. we've only 85 people in and a hell of a lot more that can't get in because we should be up around 150, 160 mark, whatever is going on tonight. Yeah. So just apologies, yeah. nothing we can do about oh, no it. Worries. But it will be recorded and it will be up on the AWGB site. So when your friends want to see it, I couldn't get in. It will okay. be up on it in a few days. Just direct them to that. Um, I'm sure everybody enjoyed it. Seen it. I was listening, obviously, um, and I've seen your workshop last night. It's fantastic. Everyone would love that workshop. Thank you. Yeah. No, so it, it has served us very well. Yeah, it, it, is a, it is a very eclectic shop. And uh, anything that uh, I, we have ever thought about, okay, let's work on something, uh, we can pretty much accomplish it here. It, is, uh, it has a pretty much all the tools uh, that one would need to create a do-it-yourself kind of project. And uh, I have great neighbors, too. I have, of course, Jimmy, Mary, like, like our... Um, our chainsaw was stolen. Somebody uh, came and stole tools from the workshop. And uh, I don't need a chainsaw anymore. So I call, when I have a huge log, I just drive it over to Jimmy's. Jimmy's, do your magic. You know, cut it up in turning pieces. And he's amazing. And I have other friends with chainsaws. And uh, another neighbor who's also a magic builder, he does all the, um, all the welding for me. So it's a whole community here in Las Vegas. And, and I'm very lucky to be here. Well, having Jimmy on your doorstep is uh, definitely a blessing. Okay, Lupe, we're going to say thanks. All right. So much, Take care. Thank on. you, guys. We'll see you.